Today we tackle servo motors. They're the motors that are going to help rover turn left or right, and you won't believe how simple it is to program them. Servo motors are different from rover's primary drive motors, the ones that actually make him roll forward and backward. Servo motors are the ones that turn between very specific points, which is ideal for what we want rover to be able to do. If, for example, we want to say, turn the wheel 45 degrees and then bring it back to face forward exactly. It's important that we know at least what direction the wheels are pointing for obvious reasons. here was how the blinking light on the Arduino Uno is in sync with the blinking light on the servo controller board and that's because they communicate on serial. Serial input and output is one of the main communication tools on an Arduino. So basically anytime the Arduino is sending something out, servo controller board, it's listening. And that's why the lights are blinking in sync. Roller's sleeping right now. I just wanted to show you guys some specifics around how to actually program a servo to turn because it's so simple. Basically we've got one line of code per servo. So Rover's got four, one at each corner, of course, and there's only three parts to each command, one line per servo. The first one is to identify which servo, so we've got on ports 28 through 31. Um, the P value is the position value, and the T value is the time value. Servo motors come in all shapes and sizes, micro, giant. In Rover's case, we're using what are called quarter-scale servos. And we pick these in particular because they have a unique ability to turn continuously. Now, we don't want Rover's servos to turn continuously. We want them, we, we still need positional control. Generally speaking, when you have a servo turn continuously, you lose positional control, meaning you don't know exactly where it is within its range. So we need to have the ability to turn with positional control, but have him be able to turn more than a typical servo can. So 750 is basically one extreme and 2250 is the other extreme. The T value, for example, is measured in milliseconds. So T1000 means perform this move within one second, 1000 milliseconds. And that's all there is to it. One line of code per servo. We send four lines of code and they're gonna simultaneously move all four servos. So let's run a simpler command just so I can show you guys the servo in action. Comment that out. We upload. Let's play it again. There it is. Just as an aside, I remember from two years ago when I was trying to figure out what motors to use, what servos to pick for Rover, and I was completely confused. And ultimately what got me through it was simply to accept that I'm not going to get it right the first time and that it's all right to change them out, replace them, get different motors, get different servos, get different wires, get, uh, circuit boards, whatever. Um, the important thing is to get started, have fun with it, accept the fact that it's gonna be a learning experience, and just enjoy the process, enjoy the journey. Yesterday we stopped short of connecting the motors to the servo shafts, and the reason for that was I didn't know yet where the servos were within their range. So today we got we found out that the range is between 750 and 2250. So I positioned the servos at 1000, so close to one of the extremes, but not quite there. So now when I connect the wheel, I can put it at kind of close to or at the extreme of one of its rotations. And then I know that it'll be able to cover any possible position in the rotation that we might need going forward. The only thing left to do now is actually connect them. So let's do it. So we've got the first one in, and as you can probably see, I've changed my mind a little bit about which uh, D shaft to use, and the reason for that was clearance over the wheel. Um, I had the original shortest one in there, and unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, uh, 
when I rotated the tire into its maximal position, kind of the position that I don't imagine us ever needing to go any further than that, uh, it couldn't clear underneath this channel bracket. Uh, so I have two other options, and I decided to go with the longest shaft, just because. Um, I guess it could be even longer, it could be shorter. Um, it clears fine, as you can see, and it should give Rover an even better stance. And there we have it, guys. All four corners are now on the servos. As you can see, Rover looks a little bit in disarray up top um, because his uh, Luxan shield is off and the wires are all kind of in a mess. Uh, the reason for that is I still need to do a bit more wiring for the, for the servo controller board. And I haven't quite figured out yet how I want to wire it in with the relays. Specifically, basically to give me the option of having the servos powered on and powered off. So that brings us to the next step which is connecting up the laptop so that we can run a few tests on the servos now that they're mounted and see if they can actually, if they're strong enough to turn the tires and the wheels without help from the motors. Um, I, I really don't know what to expect, but let me show you what I mean. So here we're looking at Rover with the new servos and it seems that it's pretty easy for me to rotate. Uh, the other thing is, Rover is much taller now. You can see that my inverted stool, it completely clears. So it's no longer useful as a support. I've connected up one battery and I've hooked up the USB cable to the laptop here. The servo board right now is receiving no power. So regardless of what I send to the Reno Uno, it's not going to affect anything with the servos until I power on the servo board. And as soon as I do that, the servos will, will react. So first what I wanna do is send a small move command uh, each of the servos. Actually, let's start with just the two forward servos. And I'm going to upload that. You see the blinking lights on the Arduino there. All we need to do now is power up the servo controller board. Here on this power module, which is sending power over to the servo controller board right here, is the SSC32 controller board. And then we're just going to monitor the, the first, the front two servos and wheels. And if anything goes wrong, I'm just gonna flip the power back off and let's see what happens. Okay, I immediately flipped the power off. We'll give that another shot. So I'm just gonna flip the switch here and we're gonna watch the motors. I'm gonna flip the switch off again if anything goes weird. Okay, so I just flipped the switch off. Okay, so I goofed. <laughs> um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect the shafts from the lower legs, from the wheels so that the servos can turn freely. Um, because right now what's messing me up, what's messing Rover up is that I don't know what command, what value, what position value for each of the servos translates to what position of the tires at each corner. Then I'll tighten down the tires and we'll give it another shot. Trying to sort out each of the four corners at the same time simultaneously is too much for me right now. I'm a little bit worried that I'm gonna burn out one of the servos or fry a controller board or what have you. So I wanna focus my attention on one corner at a time and that way we'll get Rover situated on his four servos and four wheels correctly. So what I'm gonna do now is focus complete attention on just one corner, that front right, that front right wheel there. So what we're gonna do is I know that one to be number 30, I, at least I really hope it is and I'm gonna comment out the other servo commands here. We're gonna upload that to the Arduino Uno board, and I'm gonna flip off the power again if anything goes wrong. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hold this leg up so that there's no weight on the servo. I'm gonna power on the controller board for the servos, and there we go. Okay, so it is working. have a success? Sort of. Um, I'm either dealing with a gearing problem or a servo power problem. Either they're not geared sufficiently um, low enough or they're not strong enough. So remember how I started this episode or somewhere in this episode I talked about how easy servos are? <laughs> 
And I had also mentioned how it's not a bad thing to pick the wrong stuff because you can always change them later. Well, that's sort of what I'm going to be faced with. But let me show you what happened, or let me show you what's happening. So if I push, so if I push Rover forward or backward, the servos are doing the best they can trying to keep the wheels in alignment. You can see that I'm able to roll Rover back and forth. Now, if I power off the power module delivering power to the servos, now the servos are completely off, and now I try to do the same thing. See what happened? And if I do the same thing in the front, so it's not even possible. So the servos are working, they're doing their job. Um, they're just struggling too much. So I've got to figure out another solution. It either involves adding some gears or potentially changing out servos. I don't know, I've got to look at the options and go from there. So now we're off on another journey. Um, join us next time, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to stay tuned and we'll see what options we come up with. If you guys have suggestions, please let us know via the comments on YouTube or on Rover's site. We'll see you next time. Cheers.